Today I'm going to be assembling this Ansonia clock. Uh, it's a it's a kitchen clock, an Ansonia Derby, and um, I'm going to be paying particular attention to the alignment of the uh, warning wheel, those little pins relative to the cam, uh, which is this guy here, and one that escaped me for a while was uh, the alignment of the second wheel which really controls the alignment of the count wheel uh, the count wheel relative to the um, levers here the drop lever in particular <clears throat> so let's get to it um, I've already put the um, I've already wound the springs onto the uh, great wheels and put clamps on to keep them from getting away. So that'll be the first thing. Also, you might notice that uh, the tops of these posts uh, look like brass instead of steel. And that's because I had to add a little brass washer to each post to give enough space for all the wheels to have uh, their clearance, their end shake which was kind of odd to find out. It looks like it was manufactured that way and it's just been that way for a hundred years. And so I put the springs out on the sides so they won't get in the way and then uh, off we go. Um, let's see, let's put the strike in first. So the fan first here, then the warning wheel and I won't worry about where that is right now. I'm just going to put it in place and I'll adjust it later. <clears throat> then comes the entertaining one, uh, the cam wheel and the lever. So what I do is I put this lever in place first. This is the, this is the um, drop lever that falls into the slot in the cam. And this is the lift lever that a uh, thing down there lifts. And this is the lock lever and the count lever that falls into the count wheel. First of all, I need to make sure that this lift lever here is over this way so that on this side of the hole here, so that uh, when the minute hand post comes around, it'll lift it. We'll do that later. But I just need it generally in that area. Okay, so let me put that in there. I always find this a little tricky. I've put this clock together quite a few times, both as practice and uh, to fix various things and try out the wheels and such. So, <clears throat> did I get it? Yeah, okay. So, uh, one thing, just to make things a little easier to put together, is I'm going to uh, make sure the lever, the drop lever, is not in the slot. Most people tell you to put them in with it in the slot, and I find that kind of harder because the lever, the drop of the count lever, then falls into the count wheel too early and it gets jammed when you're trying to put the plates together and stuff. So I, I just leave it like that. Then comes the second wheel. Second because it's the second away from the great wheel. And finally the uh, great wheel, which is kind of a pain. If, if I weren't making a video, I would hold this up and look underneath to find where this thing needs to land. Uh, as it is, I, I'm going to have to kind of hunt around. Let's see. Maybe I will pick it up. Oh, did I get it? I got, nope, nope, okay. Yeah, I'm gonna pick it up. Look underneath here to see where it actually goes. Let's see if that helps. Okay. It's gonna press against the second wheel here, so that makes it a little trickier to place. Well, that didn't help either, so. Let me put this back uh, about there um, <clears throat> and just hunt around again. See the holes right there. Oh, shoot. 
this, this is what happens. Uh, uh, get that back in. <laughs> okay. oh, I think I got it. Except, nope, I didn't. Maybe I should have put the wheel in first. Yes? No? Let me look. Yes. Okay. So I've got that in. Hmm. Do I really have it in? The hole? Yes. Yes, it's in the hole. Okay. So that isn't being pressed. That's good. Okay. Uh, next. Okay, before I forget, I need to take the spring from the lever here and wrap that around this post. So, like so. That uh, pushes the lever down just enough to make everything work. And before I forget, the gong, the hammer. So the hammer here um, hits the gong. And you can see there's a slot in the top uh, plate, the front plate, uh, that this little lever here fits into. So that's why I know that's how I know that the hammer is right side up. And then the other thing is, it the end of the hammer goes between, uh, you know, points toward the center of the cam wheel, because that has the spokes on it that drive the hammer. Okay, moving right along. Um, next, we've got the minute post that goes here, so it's going to lift the lift lever there. And then we've got the intermediate gear, the thing that turns the hour hand based on the minute. <clears throat> and now, let's just... I find the the escape, the uh, verge there, and the crutch to be a real pain to get in. But we'll get to that. So the escape wheel, nice pointy teeth, and it goes right side up. And then there are these two, in this particular clock, there are these two wheels that have the same number of, they look almost identical, but they're not. You can see that uh, they're, one's uh, a little higher than the other. Or lower in this case, I guess. Well, uh, oh shoot, I mixed them up. Yeah, the lower one is the one that goes in first. So, because <clears throat> the lower one drives the escape wheel, and then the upper one here drives the lower one, like so. Okay, now the second wheel on the time side here points down a little bit and it's the thing that actually runs the minute hand. And now let's go through this mess again of getting the getting the um, mainspring arbor in its place. Somewhere around here. I'm gonna look again underneath. <clears throat> After a little wrestling, I've got the mainspring, the time mainspring in. And now it's time to put the front panel on, the front plate on. So the tallest thing is the post. Then the winding arbors. And then we get into the fun. This is the long process here um, that can be frustrating, but the it doesn't need to be. Uh, it can be just slow. <laughs> so 
The idea is to just keep popping pivots in. And we'll start with the time slide here. We'll see how well this goes uh, with me looking through the camera. No, that's not going to work at all. I'm going to... Hmm. Yeah, this may not be very helpful. Uh, <laughs> okay. So I've got one thing there. So the first post is down a little bit. So let's tie that down a little bit, still keep it loose so that I can tamp in a few things. And by the way, I think, I believe this is where pivots get bent. Because if you push like down here, you're going to be putting a lot of force on the pivot. Okay, that isn't ready to go in yet. Very little is, in fact. <laughs> Hmm. Okay, I've got a look here. Okay, and in the process, I managed to lose the spring here. So I have to hook it back, which is a good trick. When the plate's on. Mm -hmm. There. There. Got that. Okay. Now, one thing that's Part of the trick, I find, is to keep the pressure on the same spot on the plate. Otherwise, everything shifts around and the pivots you've put in fall out and it's just a mess. But it is kind of a mess anyway. It's a messy process. Okay, like there. The... Oh dear, that's come out. So, I'm going to need to. This is why I said not to. Tighten that too much. So I need to loosen this plate. Ah! <laughs> okay, we're going to start over there. Uh, there, okay, good. Um, yeah. I don't know how usable this video is going to be. Okay, I have to look again. There we go. Got that in. Huh. Okay, I can put that sc screw back on. Yeah, most people don't record this because it's just tedious. But I think it's instructive. I've found it instructive to see how other people do this process. Okay. Yeah. Okay. No. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> down a little more. Maybe, maybe not. Okay, how are these guys doing? Huh. Maybe a little too much. Okay. 
Okay. Before I get too far, I have to remember to put the verge in. Oops, sorry. There. I could back out a little bit, couldn't I? That's in place. Yeah. This is going in place. Good. That has yet to tighten up enough. And this. Always pull the pivot, not the arbor. <laughs> not ready yet. Okay. Uh, okay, that's in. Is this in? Yeah. And that's in. Okay, so it's probably time to Put this third nut on a little bit of the way, just to not lose the progress I've made so far. And um, has the lever popped out here? Out of the yes, the lever's popped out of the bottom. Uh, there. Okay. So the lever's in. Okay. Um, now is a really good time to put the arbor in because soon these plates are going to close too much for the arbor to get in. Ooh, I wonder if it works better if I go in that way. Hmm. <laughs> okay. Good. Oh, bad. Uh, there. Hey, good. The arbor's in. More or less. Place. Good. Now, you may have noticed I put this gear in already. This is kind of how it goes. Is uh, you do it over and over until uh, the plate decides to stay. Okay, I think I'm getting close to the end here. <laughs> You'd never know it, would you? Is that in? No, oh, that's not in. I see the springs come loose again, so let me put that in place once we're all done, because it's, it's close enough, right? It's on the other side of the arbor. Yeah. So I can put that in later. Okay. Now. Um, <laughs> in too far, so I need to open it a little, just enough to get that in. Okay, now I can move it into place. Come on. There. Now the, oh, there. Need to check that the lever's out. And the arbor is not in place, so I'm going to have to open this up a bit. Get the arbor in place. <sighs> okay, the arbor's in place. Uh, is it? Okay, and 
Now let's double check. Everything's where it ought to be. Nope, this is jammed. Oh heck. I wonder, I wonder, I wonder, I wonder if I can. Oops. Yeah, that's good. Okay, so the hammer's free. Now you might have noticed that the spring is broken on the hammer. I'm going to be replacing that later on. And when I do, I'll have to do all this all over again. But that's no big deal, really. Okay, now the interesting part. So I've got this more or less together. You know, the, uh, the time train runs. The uh, strike train runs. But is it running right? So if you don't get this wheel and the warning with the second wheel and the warning wheel on this clock set in the right positions relative to the cam you can see through in there maybe yeah um, if you don't get those wheels right in their position relative to the cam why the clock may not stop chiming uh, striking so what i want to do is find where first find where this guy lands so let's zoom in because this is much more detailed work. Oh, maybe not. Okay. So, hopefully you can see the uh, count lever, which is the thing that drops into the uh, the teeth of the uh, Count wheel. And the first thing we're going to do is make sure that that drops in the right place. Okay, so there it went. And let's take a look. It's dropping kind of close to the edge. So, what I get to do is move this wheel, the second wheel, one tooth over relative to the cam, which is this guy in here. Okay. Apologize for the shaking hands. Um, so I'll loosen this nut a little bit so I can open that up. And I didn't put this nut on yet because I knew I was going to be doing this. So what I want to do is open the plates until that uh, wheel comes loose and just ooh, not, not that much darn something else came loose at the same time I was trying to avoid that there we go okay and now I want now that it's free I want to move it like one uh oh one gear one tooth over and then put it back and to put it back, I'm going to use this, of course. And I'm going to have to look closer. Okay, so that's back in. And then, of course, I have to do the other guys here. It's the escape in. Yeah, there it goes. Okay, and there, I need to check that the lever's free. And, ah, oh, yeah, the arbor came loose. Great. Okay. Okay, I've got the arbor back in place. But the plates aren't snapping together for some reason. There's probably something else that's out. Hmm. Hmm. Oh, no. Huh. So what I'm doing is checking wheels, but they have end shake, which means they're free. Huh. Everything seems to be in place, and yet... 
<sighs> no, the arbor wasn't quite in the right place. And now the, ah, uh, okay. So, in this clock, why the warning wheel, the fan, and the arbor tend to all fall out at once. Oh, this guy fell out again, so... Oh dear. Uh, so I'm gonna kind of... The camera decided that it had had enough. <laughs> oh, the battery looks good though. Okay. Good. Okay. Oops, the arbor again. The trouble with the arbor is that this little tool I have is not quite large enough to cover the arbor so that when I put the arbor in place like that, I pinned my tool. So this is the, uh, oh, it's a pivot mm, placer, adjuster. It's really handy for doing this kind of work. Okay, is everybody in? Okay, let's try once again and see where that um, drop or the count lever falls. Okay, oops. So that's where it fell. Oh, nice. It's right in the middle of the deep tooth, which is really good. So now I can... Oops, I went backwards. I can go forward to the next test. And it drops there. And this is good, too. It's centered pretty well. Because if it isn't centered, why it winds up dragging up the top of the the right side of the uh, gap in the teeth and it just makes a mess so okay so we're done with that but we've got one more adjustment to do um, and that is the position you can see this warning pin here and there's another one on the other side over there those are locking pins well warning pins is what they're called and what they do is when the cam drops into a deep hole, this lever, which you can't see very well here, drops down, and then the, the uh, warning pin comes along and locks against it. And so right now, the warning wheel is way out of sync. So what happens is, the, uh, let's get around to a deep hole, okay. The Drop, or the count lever here falls into a deep hole in the count wheel. But the warning pin is way over here. So by the time the warning pin gets up here, the lever has already lifted enough to let it pass. So we want to fix that. So I need to move this about. Well, let's see. So I'm going to back up until the movement locks in that position because the lever is pushing against the cam hole. And then I'm going to look at where the warning pin in. Oh, wow. So the warning pin's way down here and it should be about up here. So I need to move the wheel oh, about a third of the way around. So to do that, I'm going to open this up just enough for this wheel to get out. No more, hopefully. Uh oh, I heard something go. There. Okay, now that it's disengaged from the cam, I can move it um, to move the warning pin up here where it belongs. 
then I can move this guy back in place. Like I said, this is where a lot of pivots get bent, I imagine. This is another reason you want a certain amount of play side to side in at least this wheel or harbor uh, so that you can move it around like that. There. Okay, now of course the arbor fell out again. So let me move that back in place. Oh, shoot. Tweezers, I mean, needle nose pliers would probably be a better tool at this point. Okay, this guy's out again. There. Ah, okay. Now, let's try it again. Make sure the lever's free. Okay, so, oh, so it has locked nicely this time. You can see, I don't know if you can see that pin run up against the lever. I think you can. So let's move the lever out of the way and move forward. And when it hits the next one, it locks. And we also see it's locking in a pretty good place. So I'm going to call it good. So that's it. We've adjusted the whole thing. Here's the oiled and wound movement. It's all set to run with a pendulum. And now I can demonstrate the strike by uh, using a key as the minute hand. So watch as I turn it here. There it went into warning. And there it goes. And it'll lock when it hits a deep slot in the count wheel. Then a half hour later, it goes into warning again, and off it goes. Rings once on the half hour. So when we get up to the hour, it goes into warning, and off it goes. <laughs>